Hey guys, how you doing today? I need to repat this guy. This is my beautiful variegated burl marks. Let's see. <coughs> she is so pretty. Look at the variegation on this here leaf right here. All of them are just absolutely gorgeous. This is a plant. Um, I did a plant trade with Peggy from I still always want to say her original planet plant channel name, which is Piggy, which was Piggy's Tropical Garden. She's now oh Piggy's Plants, I believe. Good Lord, my brains! But you can see the beautiful, beautiful variegation on this plant. Isn't it gorgeous? She gave this to me. It was a baby, and it has grown so much. But I want to get her, I want to get her out of this pot. I like these pots, but um, they're hard. And you can't, or at least I can't, I mean, you can, I guess I am squeezing it just a little bit. But what I don't like about, the other thing I don't like about it is because they're so hard, but the, let's see if I can do this without, we can to dump it out anyways. The holes in these are so tiny and you can see she's just starting like right here I think there's roots starting to come out but especially when you got big thick roots on a plant and they get entwined in that little tiny those little tiny holes on the bottom of the pot they are really hard to get out and you're breaking a lot of roots. So I'm just going to loosen her up and her soil should be fine but and I also want to put a stake in her because she is so wiggly in her pot and I'm afraid she's going to break. So I've got the stake I want to put in. Get that out so I don't I don't forget. So I'm going to try to just ease her out of here. Now I've got my hand, my fingers right down. I'm going to dig them down in and hold on to the root system and try to hold on to, because I don't, I need to loosen her up more. Let me try my, here it goes. Let me try my spoon. I'm just going to try to go down and lift. Yeah, that helps. I'm going to do the other side. I'm just going to go down and lift her. Now she's nice and loose. There we go. And see, I still broke a, a root, and I probably did that with my spoon. Man, that was a nice root, too. Look at that. Oh. Okay, so I'm just going to brush off a little bit of soil. I'm trying to be very careful that I do not snap her. I'm going to stick this down in here for now just to hold her up while I'm messing around because I don't want her to bend over. I don't want her to fall over. Ooh, I almost dropped my... Now, this pot that I'm putting in her, <laughs> you go from one extreme to the other. Little tiny itty, oh, little tiny itty bitty stinking holes that are a nightmare big huge jimungus holes that are a nightmare. So this one I'm going to put, um, these are unbleached, uh, I almost said paper towel, and you could use the paper towel too. You could use screen. Um, this is just an unbleached coffee filter. It's a half of one. But what I have found with this is with the coffee filters, shoot. I like to get mine, put them down in the pot, and then get it wet. 
because it seems like when you put them in dry, and I know this sounds really weird, but it seems like they don't, it takes them a long time to drain. And then you get water pulled up in the bottom of your um, pot. So I like to wet mine first when I'm using, now the paper towels usually are a little bit better than the coffee filter. But anyways, that's what I do. You don't have to do it. Now, with philodendron, I want to add a little more perlite to her pot, even though I have perlite already in my mix, but I want her to have a lot of good, I want her to have a lot of good drainage, so I want to add extra perlite, because I don't use, um, I don't use any kind of bark or, uh, anything that's chunky. Now I'm pushing that down. And then I'm going to add some more soil. And I'm going to add a little more perlite. I'm going to add some of my worm castings. Just kind of mix that in. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick her up. And pick her up gently. And I got way too much soil. So let me dump that some of that out. There, that's better. Tuck those roots in that are trying to come out. Now I'm just loosening the soil in here. And then I want to I want to put my stake down here. Oh, that's much better. She's not bouncing around so much. And then I'm just going to finish filling this pot. She is just so beautiful. I'm just going to finish filling her pot. Now, I'm not going to have to tie her in because I think where I put the stake is going to hold her up nicely. Once again, I'm just pushing in to make the plant feel secure and get rid of any air pockets. You can also give a little tap. Be careful with the plants that you're tapping because you might break it. But I can see here she's got so many. I want to show you guys those. Look at the she's got so many growth points popping out. And if you can see, if I can get it just right, if you can see the stem right here. I think I have my dirty fingers. Oh. The stems are striped. It's so cool. But I think later, after these parts unfurl a little bit more, I can take and cut that. Cut this piece right here. Cut it off from the mother plant. I want it to get a little bigger. And with putting her in a bigger pot, and with summer coming, She's going to take off. I have been growing her under my Mars Hydro Light, which I think is why she's so incredibly variegated. I don't know, but I find that most variegated uh, plants really, really like a higher light. So, now, I fed her some worm castings. You guys probably see me sprinkle that in, or I might have said it. I don't remember now. There. That looks good. And I think she is all ready to go. And 
I will set her right back. Well, I'll probably have to move around some of my plants, but I also want to make a tag for her. Oh, there's my rope salus I forgot to put in water. I don't know if you guys will see this video first or my rope salus video first that I just got done doing. I had a few plants I wanted to repot today, so that's what I'm doing. And I want to tell you guys, I got... Oh, where is it? There's a few things that I want to show you also in this video, besides my beautiful burl marks. Variegated burl marks. Oh, she is gorgeous. Anyways, I got on Amazon, <clears throat> I got these great little greenhouse kits. And it comes with, you get, oh, I'm, I'm afraid I'm going to knock that over. It comes with, now this one I have filled up. I'm, I have some seed soaking that I'm getting ready to plant later today or tomorrow. It comes with these. Let me move this. My god, I don't have enough room on my stupid little tiny table. Woo! It comes with these really nice white trays and I love them because they're really um, hard but yet soft so you can push your plug plant that you put in there, you can push it right out. And then it came with, this is the, the top, which is your dome. I have two of them here. And then it comes with these, you just take these little air vent circle, circles, you pop them in there, you hear it snap and then you can there it is open and then close really cool I love I love these I got them in a 10 pack um, on Amazon and then I got all of these plant labels which I got this is a hundred piece pack but I bought the thousand or I think it was 500 or 1,000, so I got like a bunch of these. But what I really found that I love because I can't, the only thing that I have found, permanent marker does not stay. I don't care. I've tried all different kind of markers and um, I just cannot get them. <laughs> Especially when you're putting plants outside like, you're, like this. It fades. So I got this beautiful, it's an art line garden marker. I got it on Amazon. I think it was like four dollars for a single. Now I bought five of them because, well, I'm an idiot because I hope they don't dry out. But they come sealed in plastic, so I'll leave the plastic on. But I want to keep one in here. I want one um, outside. In, I have like a little tool caddy that I carry around with me. It's got my, my pruning shears, and I've got regular shears, and I've got zip ties, and you know, blah, 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 a knife and all that. I want to keep one in my little garden caddy for outside, and I want to keep one in my greenhouse, and I want to keep one on probably on my back porch. Nah, probably not on my back porch. But, um, these are great. It's got a really fine tip and the writing on them is absolutely beautiful. You can, here, it is just, now I'm going to mark my burl marks variegated. And then I'm going to write, um, I got this in 2020 from Linda, I mean not Linda, from Peggy. So I'm going to write her name on it, that way I know who gave it to me. I always try to do that, but it's got beautiful, oh, it's got beautiful writing 
it, it's you can get in with a small stuff it's like my other permanent marker it had a fine tip but it wasn't like this and it you can hardly write and then once you wrote on it you can hardly read the writing maybe that was just me with my arthritis sometimes my writing is hideous so but anyways I wanted to show you guys that um, that I got and I will be watering her in and I'm also going to give her um, her other neem oil treatment but I thought you guys might want to you know see her because she is just I can't believe how gorgeous she is variegated burl marks and just gorgeous look at that leaf beautiful but I can't wait till I can cut one of these pieces off and then stick it right back down in the soil with her and make her really nice and full. One thing about burl marks though is they do climb, they are a climber and they get really tall. Now I don't know about this one. I've seen a few on uh, YouTube um, and they're sort of big and the leaves will get bigger too but they are a climber so ugh. I might try to keep mine a little on the bushier side. The last thing I need is another climbing plant. And I see a root, a root sticking out here. Cover her back up. Put just a little more soil in here. But, anyways, guys, that is it. I keep her in highlight. She's just like any other philodendron. She likes a lot of food. Um, to keep them. To keep them healthy and growing the way that they should be and you're not getting a bunch of small leaves and so on um, you want to feed your philodendrons uh, quite a bit at least at least once a month but I give my fish fertilizer every time that I feed I put a catful in which probably amounts to about a tablespoon of fish fertilizer in a gallon jug I use just I save gallon jugs and that's what I put my fish fertilizer in I'm gonna go ahead and water her since I got that in my hand but do you guys see how fast that water is draining that's how you want that's how fast you want your water to drain very very quickly and like I said, I don't have any, all I have in here is regular potting soil. I do not use anything special. I buy what, um, I buy stuff that's on sale. I buy stuff that is handy. I buy whatever the stores have. Um, I have not found a huge difference, really honestly, in any particular uh, potting soils. I bought some of the organic potting soil and for me I find I have found that it molds up really quickly uh, and it has a lot of gnats in it and God knows what else might be in there. It, I mean because it is an organic potting soil but you can get that with any potting soil but I have found with I've had I've used Happy Frog and what was that other brand I used? I don't remember right now off the top of my head what that other brand was I was using. I bought just like a bag or two. But I found they had they were very prone to a lot of gnats and they got moldy really quickly because I think with it being in the bag and not which and any soil can do that. If it's wet and then dry or even damp and then starts drying out, they will get mold um, in the bags. But um, I just, I don't spend a whole lot of money on potting soil. I just don't really think that it's necessary. And this is just my opinion. I don't think it's necessary to go out and buy super expensive potting soil. Because as long as you're amending your soil, which means feeding it, you're feeding your soil, you're feeding your roots, and you're feeding your plant. So, um, 
you know, between the worm castings and the fish fertilizer and the kelp that I use every once in a while, which I don't really use a whole lot of kelp on my foliage plants. I use that more on my flowering, but anyways, I'm getting jibbery jabbery, but there she is, all beautiful. I am going to let you guys go. I have a, I'm going to go outside today and do a lot more gardening. We have a snowstorm. If you guys can believe this, I can't believe it. It is April 17th, I believe. It's Monday. It might be the 16th. It could be the 19th. I don't know. But we are getting a snowstorm tomorrow night. And we're supposed to be getting 3 to 5 inches of snow. So I have a lot, a lot of work to do. I have to go out and cover up my hydrangeas that are all budding out. My peonies are all out. They're not budding, but they're growing profusely. Anything and everything that I can get covered up, um, I'm just going to start at the point today where I'm going to be dragging things out. My pots. I'm using empty beehive boxes for my taller stuff. Um, I told my husband I was doing that last night. And he was like, do it. Do what you got to do. Save your plants. And I'm like, well, I'm going to. <laughs> but um, I need to secure my greenhouse. Um, so it, this is very disappointing and I'm, I'll tell you, I could just cry. I could just absolutely cry. Three to five inches of snow and then we are going to get bone cold down to like 22 degrees and I could just sit here and ball. But I'm not going to ball. I'm going to go outside. I'm going to work my butt off today and try to get every container that I can possibly find to fit every plant that I want to get covered up and just try to do my best. I'm not going to be able to save everything. I mean, I've got hostas coming up, pushing up through the ground, and they're leafing out. Um, this is just a mess, guys. I cannot believe this. I mean, we're I'm used to getting heavy frost, you know, still at this time of the year. But we usually don't have three to five inches of snow in the middle of April. I mean, this is just heartbreaking. I, I could just lay down and cry right out in the middle of my garden beds because I got everything that's just coming up. And, well, enough of, enough of my crying and moaning. But um, I'm going to let you guys go because I have a lot of work to do. It's like 9 o'clock in the morning here. And I've repotted a few house plants waiting for it to uh, warm up a little bit. I'm going to get my butt outside. I'm going to try to make I'm going to try to put a video together of everything that's in bloom. I've got pear trees in bloom. I've got cherry trees in bloom. I've got plum trees in bloom. And they're all going to be gone in a couple days. So the snow and the cold is just going to destroy everything. So, And I want to get my beehives covered up because they have been, they've got babies. And I think I'm just going to wrap some plastic around them and try to tape them down just to try to help keep the babies warm even though my beehives are bursting with bees but and I know they're gonna do a great job keeping the larva warm but I want to give them a little bit of protection and help them out too and so I will talk to you guys later you have a great day and have fun in your gardens have fun with your house plants I will talk to you later. Bye. Peace.